I am doing CR geometry for one month, mostly, not more, and mostly during my long bike <laughs> trip. And therefore, this conference is called training school, and for me it is really a training school in literal sense. I am a beginner here <laughs> just one month, and uh, therefore, please be uh, liberal, and you should not expect that I will say you some principle in your results. Uh, well, but uh, I'll explain uh, how I see this problem, how my uh, what is my approach? Uh, well, similar to my appro approach to other problems of local geometry that I was doing the last seven years, seven, eight years, concentrating mostly on uh, 235 distribution, classical Cartan uh, case. Uh, well, uh, so I hope uh, that you will find something interesting. <coughs> Uh, here, I'm sorry that I uh, have not prepared, uh, well, in fact, I prepared uh, uh, a Beamer file, uh, like other uh, people, but uh, I prepared it just a few days ago, uh, because the organizers asked me to give the talk today, uh, instead of Thursday, when it was initially uh, scheduled. Well, and I did the file a few days ago, giving up some very interesting sightseeing in Moravia. But yesterday I realized that in my Beaver file there were principally wrong claims. <laughs> uh, and therefore uh, I had no time to make a new file, but I'll try to write on the desk clearly with big letters. Well, why? Uh, I am just, uh, I did, uh, as I say, I was m last seven years, eight, mostly interested in two, three, five distributions, and before that I didn't do anything in local differential geometry. Uh, I did pure singularity theory. Well, so many of my colleagues uh, pressed me to uh, use my method, my techniques, uh, to attack uh, the CR geometry, to construct normal form and to use them in CR geometry and to. Uh, I uh, could do some, something similar what I did for 235 distribution, but for this problem. Uh, well, but I uh, uh, didn't want somehow to start it because I like when everything is real as well as when everything is complex, and here is some mixture of complex and real, and my feeling was that there will be. Uh, big uh, <coughs> confusion in organization uh, of uh, all what I need. Uh, well, but nevertheless, uh, uh, in uh, uh, June, uh, Jan Sorok <coughs> uh, visited me, and and he was the first to succeed to who succeeded to bring me. Uh, to this problem, which is a bit surprising. Our mass language with Jan are very different, but namely uh, his lecture in my office, uh, about short lecture intro about introduction to CR geometry, somehow impressed me that I started, that I decided to start uh, this uh, uh, problem. So I know that uh, many people are uh, interested in cases of dimension 2 and higher. Maybe next time 
Uh, well, it is Grigorovich and Jan Slovak uh, also. Uh, I heard interesting results from some other people. Uh, well, but uh, today I'll speak only about could you mention one case, so real hypersurfaces. And well, uh, one more. Uh, I think why I started it, it was some advice of Bora uh, Kruglikov. Where is Bora? Ah, hi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and uh, in Warsaw, <laughs> when, so Borja said me, but well, I said that I am thinking to start this problem, that I, Borja said me that he hoped that I will use complexly conjugate <coughs> coordinates, otherwise I will be blocked, uh, it will be a mess, uh, well, and uh, <coughs> And first I said, what's the difference? But then I realized that Borja was absolutely right. So thanks for, to Borja too. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, so it will be for me as R to N plus 2 with coordinates U, double U, the real and imaginary part of Z zero and z1, z1 bar, zn, zn bar. Well, so, so I'm really like other people, I'm using completely conjugate coordinates except z0 for one of the complex coordinates we need to deal with its real and imaginary part. Well, I hope Bore will allow me yeah, to do uh, so. And, uh, and therefore, I can write a normal form for real hypersurfaces. Uh, first, primitive normal form using not more that than the explicit function uh, theorem, namely W, the imaginary part of the uh, zero is sum S is equal to zero and absolute value of alpha, absolute value of beta is bigger or equal than one. Alpha and beta are multi-indices. U to the power s times z to the power alpha times z bar to the power beta and times coefficient, say r, which depends on r, s, alpha, and beta. <coughs> so you Here, consider analytic huh? So you consider only analytic hypersurface? Yes, yes, uh, analytic hypersurface. And what is written here is just general Taylor series of, um, of a function of variables u, z, the tuple, z1, zn, and z bar, the tuple, z1 bar, zn bar. Alpha is multi index, alpha bar, alpha n. Beta is also multi index. It is not more than implicit function. Uh, well, no, I have to write. Uh, I have to write absolute value of alpha plus absolute value of beta is 2. If I am using only explicit function theorem, so this is uh, so, right?
It is just explicit function theorem, but uh, for arbitrary, uh, for arbitrary hypersurface, without speaking about Levy form, without speaking about anything, arbitrary hypersurface can be reduced to the same form where up, uh, the sum of the coordinates of alpha is at least one, and the sum of the coordinates of beta is also at least one. So z to the power alpha is z1 to the power alpha 1 times so on, similar z bar to the power beta. So with this constraint, it's already not, it's already more than implicit function theorem, and it is normal form for arbitrary case. This is the best normal form one can get when using just information just uh, just this information so w is something uh, well any uh, we, we know nothing we know nothing without any information about hypersurface we have this uh, normal form so so this function starts from a quadratic part. Corresponding to S is zero. Absolute value of alpha is one. Absolute value of beta is one. And this quadratic part is the quadrant expression of the Levy form at zero at the origin of our space. I am not speaking about Levy form at any point. Uh, well, it is Levy form <coughs> at zero, but this normal form is for germs at, at zero. And we can construct the same normal form for germ at any point near the origin. <coughs> well, when we have some, some invariant, then uh, as uh, all people are doing uh, here, uh, uh, it is worse to, uh, to say what happens is if this invariant is identically zero and it is easy to it is easy to prove that the form is identically zero for germ not only at zero for germ at any point if and only if we have normal form Just very simple normal form, W is equal to zero. It's a theorem, rather simple theorem, but which requires proof. The next step is to choose a direction of research. To construct further normal form, we have to deal 
this short one, what is called the singularity theory, singularity class. So we have to <coughs> fix the rank of the Levy form at zero. And uh, speak about normal form with fixed rank of the view form at zero. So, of course, it is worth to start with the case that the view form is non degenerate. can be brought. It's very easy to sum paper one to n kappa i z a z a bar kappa i a plus of minus one Plus, this is the V form, not degenerate, and plus, well, the same thing, but now absolute value of alpha plus absolute value of beta. Starts from three and still. None of these multi indices is zero. And sum by S. Of course, in this normal form, forms are. S alpha, S beta alpha, if you replace beta and alpha, then we have to have R S alpha beta conjugate. So these parameters are complex, but when but they are when we replace alpha beta, they are complex to conjugate because uh, this function must be real, a real valued function. So what we have, uh, we have this normal form, but now it is absolutely natural to ask what can we do now with these coefficients, because now we have much more information. Now it is not arbitrary, but we need non-degenerate case. So we have information about terms of degree two, and using this information of terms of degree Two, we can simplify these coefficients, these terms of degree three and more. So, question. How to simplify to reduce to a simple form as possible R S alpha B in this normal form. Of course, we can consider also the case when the V form at zero uh, is, has rank smaller than N. Then, in general, there will be here the sum from K to P, where P is 
well, if it's not zero, from one to n. In general, yeah, and we can ask uh, the same question. Okay, so in general, it will be some from one to p, not bigger than n here. And the same equation, so if p is strictly smaller than n, it is maybe the generate form. But I will speak about Levy not the generate form, though for, uh, for many people, Levy the generate form is an interesting case. The other thing is that for people for whom Levy the generate form is an interesting case, usually <coughs> restrict themselves to the case that the rank of Levy form is the same at any point near the origin. Uh, and then there are some interesting uh, things about this. Well, I uh, have talk of uh, David Sykes uh, and Igor Zelenko about, <coughs> about that, and some other people are also, but probably many people are interested, uh, namely in this case. <coughs> For me, uh, uh, with my mathematical culture coming from singularity theory, uh, it is a bit uh, hard to accept, uh, to accept this case, but I accept, but it's just personally a bit hard. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, because, uh, but, uh, uh, well, the thing is that people are hunting for uh, for homogeneous models, and then uh, it is uh, not only in this problem, but in many problems, uh, people are doing similar, several things, uh, similar things. Well, for example, uh, classifying two things distribution, Borel to Borel and Igor Zemianka, they are mostly interested in the case that the symbol the important approximation is elliptic, which is degenerate case. In non-degenerate case, it is uh, hyperbolic. Uh, uh, it's parabolic. Uh, in, in generic case, uh, it is uh, hyperbolic or uh, elliptic. Uh, well, uh, but then it is namely a parabolic degenerate case, uh, but at any point. Well, uh, well, if it's interesting, it is, and it's interesting. In the same way, Jan uh, Slovak uh, doing a uh, dimension two case, could dimension two case, is especially interested in the case when the analogous of Levy form, a more complicated uh, object, <coughs> could dimension two case, uh, well, uh, is uh, uh, for the form there are three possibilities in this, uh, uh, also that can be called uh, hyperbolic, elliptic, and parabolic, and uh, the, the most symmetries are in parabolic case, uh, and uh, therefore. Uh, Jan is especially interested, am, am I right, in this case? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, and, uh, well, and there are many, many other uh, examples. No, well, it depends on what is uh, the final purpose. If you are the most, uh, if people are mostly interested in homogeneous model and classification of all homogeneous, uh, then, of course, it is natural, so the, according to the principle that the more degenerate case, uh, uh, the bigger symmetries we have. It's not a theorem, but it's uh, conceptually uh, uh, obvious, uh, obvious principle. Uh, well, by the way, the word degenerate uh, uh, somehow uh, 
it's uh, in many works uh, there are degenerate, liquid, non-degenerate, degenerate, and so on, so on. Well, uh, it's interesting that in Russian language, degenerate, virajdeni, virajdeni, it's absolutely a good word, but some uh, colleagues, uh, of my colleagues in France, uh, they told me that uh, it is not nice to say degenerate. Is it uh, right? Am I right? Volodya, Volodya is here? No. Okay, so, uh, so they somehow, in, in French, they do not like this word. Uh, well, it depends whether you talk about someone's wife or someone's husband. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even, even in mass, they extend it even, even to mass. Uh, and, uh, and then what? And you know, all this stuff uh, uh, with the symmetries, when we have symmetries, we have symmetries in one of infinitely degenerate cases. So I wonder how in France uh, <laughs> it would sound infinitely that something is infinitely degenerate. Uh, well, but okay, it's their problem. Uh, well, anyhow, it is uh, uh, it is terminology. Uh, so let's uh, return. Uh, to this uh, uh, question, and you've got about twelve minutes to go. Sorry, you've got about twelve minutes. To go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for me? Yes. I started at four zero five. Yes, and, and it's for forty minutes total. So. For forty-five. Yeah, so fifteen again. minutes. Yeah. 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 It's enough. <laughs> The answer is no. Well, uh, well, I am not an expert in our literature, but I looked through. Uh, through these papers. And also maybe a bit. Uh, and of course, in some other papers, of course, you can find some normal forms uh, where the answer for me. Is not nice at all. Well, uh, uh, well, it is personal. I'm underlining for for me uh, and uh, the group. It's even worse. Well, uh, I hope you will not say that I am not political correct. Correct, saying this uh, the sentence uh, uh, well because a lot of these people who are uh, who are here. Uh, well, I mentioned some big guys, uh, right? But uh, also, if you wish, I can add today. Maybe uh, when I. I don't know. I will understand better, but it's those who know this for know that it is even to say what is it, it's uh, some terms or some conditions, it's not that simple at all. Uh, and thinking about this, I realized that I do not like the answer because the question is not natural, this question. It looks very natural, so we have uh, this normal form and now clearly that we can do something with these coefficients. But I realized
is a priori like this, not good. And what is a what is a good question? A good question is as follows. We consider hypersurfers of the form omega minus some kappa i z i z i bar plus minus George of weighted degree C and more is my notation for way <coughs> weighted degree where the weights of U and V of the same Z0, Z0, 1 is 1, Z I, Z I. Yeah, two, one. <coughs> so this, so that this function is weighted homogeneous, <coughs> or quasi homogeneous, you can say, of degree two, and the rest is terms of degree three. And how the question is how to simplify. that these two questions above and here are the same question, but, but there is a difference. The difference is that in the first question we want to construct a normal form which has no W here. We have W here, so we do, of course, in the first normal form, we have W. So in the next normal form, we can always construct it without W. But we can construct it also with W. Normal form might contain W. And then, the answer to this question I'll give it is very simple. Let's consider the differential operators we differentiate a function with respect to z0, alpha 0, z1, alpha 1, zn, alpha n, let's denote somehow this operator, d, alpha 0, alpha n, I need one more operator, U alpha L with differentiate a function with respect to DZ1 alpha 1, DZN alpha L, and also with respect to T ZK bar. So here is also in K. It's L operator. And one 
one more, the last operator. I need h is the differentiator function with respect to w minus sum t is 1 to n second derivative with respect to dz dz k the k bar theorem answering to this question Sorry, and uh, when you write the sum, you don't take into account the levy form. Uh, I'm not taking into account what? The levy form. So you take just sum with all classes, so without this. Uh, ah. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 right. Time is Yeah, thanks. So, CRM? terms of degree m can be brought terms, let's say, f of degree m, that will be here, f, can be brought to The kernel of D alpha zero alpha L where two alpha zero plus alpha one plus one plus alpha L is M <coughs> intersected with the kernel of the same conjugate. Intercepted with the kernel of U K alpha zero alpha L intercepted with the kernel of the same conjugate. Intersected with the kernel of the vector H. What, <coughs> it is alpha. What, what is alpha? How is alpha related to F? Alpha that related to what? How you read alpha from M? Because, because we have many okay, so for okay. alpha. So it's for all, you intersect with all alpha? Or? All alpha satisfying this condition, and here alpha zero, yeah plus alpha n is m minus 1, in order to have degree f, m minus 1. So all intersection uh, for all, uh, in this part for all this i from 1 to n, and for all multi-indices alpha, satisfying this condition, and here for all multi-indices alpha, starting from 0, here satisfying that condition. Uh, well, and uh, it is rather simple normal form, and you know, so you can write it explicitly uh, everything except here. So if we forget about this, then it's very easy to write what does it mean in terms of monomials. <laughs> this condition is, uh, is harder, but it can be analyzed. <coughs> and so a priori will have in this normal form, W. Of course, <coughs> we can kill this W, but the price will be that appear <coughs> terms 
with that I, that I bar, which can be normalized, and these are many step procedure, and this explains why here we have so many complicated conditions. So I think that this is conceptually better. It's, it's easy to deal <coughs> to deal with that. It is almost exact normal form. It is exact <coughs> up to a finite uh, group of transformation, which is uh, the finite dimensional kernel of the uh, or certain uh, operator corresponding to uh, this part. I have no time to write them, but they are very simple. They, they, they are uh, infinite among symmetries of this hypersurface without this term. So we can consider infinite among uh, symmetries of quasi degree uh, zero, one, and two, and we can uh, and theorem is that there are no infinite symmetries of quasi degree bigger than two. Uh, well, and using the infinite symmetries of quasi degree zero, one, and two, uh, we can uh, we can do more. First thing that we can uh, we can normalize the first inv invariant. So, which can be called chern mother tensor. The first invariant is uh, uh, is uh, uh, f in f p in this normal form with minimal possible p. Which is, and p is equal, it is easy to calculate, p is equal to 6 if n is equal to 1, and p is equal to 4 if n is 2 or more. Uh, so c2 and c3 and, and higher are, uh, are different uh, uh, cases in terms of the first invariant, which can be called shell mother tensor. Appear. So using infinite rather symmetry, so quasi degree zero of this part, well, we can normalize the uh, Chern Moser tensor and using infinite rather symmetry, so degree one and two, we can do something. We can say what, at least in particular cases, with the terms here of degree, uh, in the normal form of degree beyond this chain of tensor of quasi degree <coughs> p plus one and uh, p plus two. I have to stop here. My time is uh, over. But of course, uh, uh, this individual symmetries, how they act. And so we are uh, in this way. Uh, well, I will be in the same framework as I did for Cartan case for other uh, problems, I have no time, don't have time for computation. So maybe next time, or maybe a whole journey with somebody else, I will do that. The last sentence I would like to say that this uh, theorem, the proof is very simple. Using what I called GR in the product. Well, <coughs> which is the product, the inner product uh, uh, in polynomials. Uh, so, P, uh, let me write in some any, any coordinates xn, u, x1, xn, some r alpha, x to the alpha, meta alpha x to the alpha is some alpha factorial, product of factorials are alpha b alpha 
it is very convenient in the product because as 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 soon as we fix in the product, <laughs> so so all this number form so is constructed like in one papers we have to find a, a good complementary space to the image of certain operator, and one of the possibilities is to take the kernel of conjugate operator uh, with respect to a good inner product. So I am using this inner uh, inner product. Well, because the conjugate to the operator p of x1 so on xn times f, the conjugate operator uh, is uh, <coughs> is what is p? We have to replace the variables by derivatives. So is this one? So it's very, it's very useful, and the proof is very quick with this. In the product, it's just very quick. So we don't have time even for quick proofs now. So yeah, we've got ten minutes over. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, there is one participant of the conference, namely Valentin Vasilyevich Chagin, uh, who know why I'm using this GR. Because my first teacher, my second teacher is Arnold, my first teacher is Gendry Kruvinovich, you will not remember, this is the initial Beritsky. Well, and he uses inner products for local dynamical system and impressed people many years ago, 40 years ago, in the same time when Mozart and Weppermann were interested in this. Uh, in this stuff. Thanks for your attention. Sorry Thank for you. Thank you very much. <laughs> we shall shift possible questions and answers for coffee breaks, and I would like to invite the next speaker. Yeah.